for the bone and fixing it together with screws. So, which are the instruments which make the orthopedician similar to a carpenter? It is these. Look at both of them and basically they look alike. But look at them carefully and look at them through the profile. You can see that one of them is beveled at one side and the other is beveled on both sides. The one which is beveled on one side is the chisel and the one which is beveled on both sides is called the osteotome. How do you remember which one is the chisel and which one is the osteotome? The easiest way is just to remember that C is half of O. O is the osteotome and it has got two sides beveled, sharpened and C is the one that is the chisel, the one with one side or the half which is beveled. An instrument which is very similar to the chisel and the osteotome and very similar to the way it is used is the bone gooch. Now, whereas the chisel and the osteotome are used to make straight cuts, the bone gooch can be used to make cuts which are curved. And basically, you use it to gooch out the bone with the bone gooch, usually used for taking bone graft from the iliac crust. And you can see that the bone gooch has got a peculiar spoon like shape for which it helps to take out the bone in that particular shape and size. The next question that is asked is how do you diff use these two separately? The most important answer in this case is that the chisel is used for surface work. Suppose you have a tumor on top of a bone. The instrument that you have to use is this, the chisel. You take the beveled edge and keep it on top and then you basically advance it forward by hitting it with the mallet. Whereas the osteotome, the name itself is used like this. It is used to hit on the bone and cut the bone at that place which is desired basically after pre-drilling it with holes in that desired direction. So, the osteotome comes down on the bone like this, whereas the chisel comes down on the bone like this. Remember that there is one more instrument which people may confuse the osteotome and the chisel with. Again, this may create confusion in the exam hall. Look at it carefully and at the first sight it looks just like a chisel because it has got one edge like this straight and the other edge chisel or bevel. Look at it carefully and you will see that there is a small curve downward and look at the back and you will see that there is a serrated thumb rust. This instrument is the periosteal elevator. Once you come up to the periosteum after dissecting the tissues, you have to elevate the periosteum from the bone and expose the bone for your surgery. So, the periosteal elevator is held not like this, the same way you hold a chisel and osteotome, but like this. The thumb, the thumb should come onto the thumb rest and it is then put on the bone and the periosteum is separated like so. The periosteal elevator is used only for the periosteal and it is not used for the bone. This is basically a soft tissue instrument and this is the instrument which is the one to be used with utmost care because the more you strip away the soft tissues using the periosteal elevator, the more avascular the bone becomes and the more chance of non-union or infection. So, of these instruments, the one to be used with utmost care and discretion is basically this. This is the curette. It is simply shaped like a spoon on either side. One size at one side and another size at the other side. The curette is used to clean the end of the bone either in infected cases or in cases where there is soft tissues which are obstructing your fracture reduction. This is the last of the instruments used directly on the board that is secured. The next instrument that you have to know is the drill bit. The drill bit 
is the ordinary drill bit that you may have seen in your house when painters, carpenters or even electricians are using. The drill bit is fixed to this, that is the drill using the chucky, the chuck and the chuck is tightened using this and this is called the chucky. Once the drill bit is tightly fitted onto the chuck with the chuck key like this. It is ready for drilling onto the bore. The desired part is marked and two or three motions to and fro are used to make an indentation. You turn the drill and finally you make the hole. You have to tap the bore so that you make threads on the surface. For that you put the tap and make to and fro movements like so and then you take it out. Once it is tapped, it is ready for you to receive your screw. You can either put the screw onto the bone to reduce it in the lag as like a lag screw or basically you put the screw through the plate like so and using a screwdriver you introduce the screw through the plate and into the bone. And once this is done you can you have a secure fixation of the screw to the plate. This instrument is called the drill guide. The drill guide has got two sides and even though they look similar this side and this side if you look carefully you will notice that this hole is central and this hole is eccentric. This eccentric side is called the load or the compression screw. The drill guide is placed through the, drip, the holes on the plate like so. And once it is placed on the plate, the drill guide will decide where your drill goes. If you use the loading side or the compression side, it goes in eccentrically and on the other hand, if you use this side, it will go in through the central manner. Depending upon whether you put a neutral screw or a compression screw, the property of your screw to compress the bore varies. This instrument is called the awl. Many people who don't know the exact pronunciation call it the owl. It is wrong. It is A W L. The awl, even though it looks sharp, usually is to be blunt. It is to be held by the hand and you take the bone wherever you need to make the hole. You press it and turn it in a series of movements to make the hole that you desire. Once the hole is made, the instrument that you desire to pass through this hole, whether it be a nail or even a wire, can be passed in through this hole which is made by the awl. The awl has got a pointed end and a big handle for holding and introducing like so. It is commonly used for a, making the holes on the cortex for the radial or the ulnar nails. This instrument is commonly called hammer but in the theatre this is called a mallet. There is not much difference between these two words. Basically, a mallet means a hammer. But the mallet that the people use in the workshop or in the carpent carpentry shop have, has got a metal uh, a head which is not metal. It may be made of wood. But as far as we in orthopedics are concerned, our mallet is made completely of steel and this should be stainless steel. This is our mallet. 
It is used to drive in many of the instruments that you use, especially the cane ale. And we may have mallets of different sizes. There is also something called the fiber mallet, which is used to hit instruments which we do not require to be damaged. If you hit the cane nail on one side, you cannot cause significant damage to the cane nail. But if you hit an Austin Moore processes with the mallet, you will cause a large amount of indentation and scratching on its surface, which is not desirable. Therefore, you have to use an interface which is soft between the Austin Moore processes and the mallet and hit it on like that. Or you have to use something called as a fiber mallet, which has got a fiber or plastic at either end, or with which you can hit the instrument and not cause damage or scratching on its surface. This instrument is something called the plate bender. You may have noticed that no bone in the human body is straight. Even the long bones have got a significant amount of curve on them. And to fix the bone onto the plate, you may have to bend the plate using this instrument called plate benders. For that, you take the plate, you assess how much of bending is there on the board and using the plate bender, you hold the plate like so and then you bend it. This is commonly used in Perthes disease where you have to create an angle of approximately 120 degrees for the plate and fix the bone at an angle of 120 degrees and maybe even for osteotomies. Or you can use small bends to just curve the plate like so. In orthopedics instruments, one of the most important one, not only of historical but also of practical significance, is probably this. This is the cane. The full name of this is Gerhard Kunscher's clover leaf shaped intramedullary nail for femur. Of these, each word is important. Gerhard Kunscher was a German doctor who invented this thing. Second, it is clover leaf shaped in the cross section. If you look at it carefully, you can see that it is clover leaf shaped. Now this clover leaf shape to a small extent prevents rotation inside the femur. Next, it is an intramedullary nail and it is to be inserted through the inside of the bone in comparison to the plate which is kept outside and can also be called extramedullary fixation. So this is an intramedullary nail. And this is an instrument which is basically designed for the female. Which means that Kunscher did devise another intramedullary nail for tibia which probably did not become that popular.